Yo, what's good with y'all, man? It's your boy to be wildin' and I'm back again with another reaction, man. We got this arrest cost the city $1.2 million, bro. We finna get into this. Shout out to Cub Cube Hub 01. And this channel major. This is about 1.4 million uh, subscribers, okay? We finna get into this video right here. See what's about. Make sure I'm gonna like, sub, sub, and do all that good stuff. Without further ado, let's get right into it. While police are meant to serve and protect, sometimes bad apples make wrong decisions that end up costing the city millions of dollars. In the strangest arrest in history, a man named Luther asked a police officer for directions and then proceeded to go on his way. But he didn't quite understand the instructions from the officer, so he went inside a white castle to ask for directions to the employees, and the policeman followed him inside. Hi. Hey, what are you doing, man? I'm just looking for my way back to the trying to get a... I told you where it was at about two minutes ago. That was you? Yeah. I, well, who the was it? I'm sorry. I, just, I know you're the cops. So I told you where it was at, right? Yeah. So why are you in here asking the same thing? I'm not for sure where I'm going. I told you where to go. All right. Thank you. Is that, that, is that accurate or no? Yeah. yeah. So why are you in here? I was just making sure. Making sure I did the right thing? I just, I'm not for sure where I'm going. I told you where to go, right? Yeah. So why are you in here? All right. Sorry. No, no, no. Why are you in here? I told you I wasn't for sure. The officer was being extremely rude, and since Luther didn't do anything wrong, he decided to leave, since there's no legal basis for the cop to detain him. All right, thank you. Come here, guy. Come here. Yo. Whoa, 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 whoa. What are you doing, man? Eh? Like An altercation occurred. Hang on, Cap. That cop is definitely abusing his power right now. Because what is he, how is, I don't know what happened before the video started though. That's that's the, the gray area for me. But from where the camera started, you're mad at him for going to ask for directions from them inside there after you just told him. Like, why is that a need for you to lash out on him though? Just because you're a cop, you're supposed to trust your word. How do you know you ain't trying to send him somewhere to get set up? Or, because you're a cop. Like, you got to understand, like, <laughs> just because you're a cop don't mean somebody got to trust you fully. There's a lot of crooked cops out there. I ain't saying they all bad, but there's a lot of crooked cops out there, too. So, I feel like he was just trying to get a second uh, opinion, pretty much. Like, okay, you're right, then. It is right here. What's wrong with that? This cop definitely tripping. Like I said, from where this video started, I don't know what happened before. Causing the man to fall from the bike while he was being detained. And you can hear him confused about why they're arresting him. What? Okay, okay. So what did I do? What did I do? I'm sorry, what did I do? I just was asking for directions, bro. The body cam fell to the floor during the incident, so there wasn't much footage or audio. However, you can hear Luther asking the officer to stop applying so much pressure. He was then taken to the station and charged with resisting and opposing a police officer. Luther sued the city and was awarded $9.2 million. Luther had a right to resist, because as a citizen, most people don't know this. You can resist an unlawful arrest. This next case of corruption is so egregious so that the victims... Okay, look. Clearly, buddy won that case, bro. <laughs> That's tough. Attorney wanted this video made public to show the locals what happened. In April 2018, a police officer responded to a call about a man named Polo, who had allegedly aimed a gun at someone. The description stated that Polo was wearing green and black. However, when the officer arrived at the scene, he saw a man named Nate in a purple shirt checking his mail. Who are we calling about? <laughs> calling about you? <laughs> calling about me. Hey, how about you watch your mouth for your ass gets thrown in the back of my car? Bro, you told me they're bothering this man, bro. Look, why the, a lot of power trip going on. A lot of power trip. He can talk how you want to talk. Freedom of speech, bro. Just because you're getting mad because buddy ass talking like that. Stop being a bitch. <laughs> Simple as that, bro. There's no way for me to just like sugarcoat that. Stop being a bitch. Yo, feelings hurt because he's talking to you like that, and you in a uniform, you want him to bow down to you and be like, oh, sorry, sir, like, nah, you got shit fucked up, bro. Hey, listen. No, get your ass over here. You're not part of this. Come here. Come here, right now. 
Come here. You can't go for what? I'm you shooting my fucking property, dog. Bro? Are you gonna shoot his dog? Whoa. You walked on his property, bro. What make you so fucking mighty and bold to walk on somebody's property threatening them? Like, cops, man, be abusing their power, bro. Some, some, some. I'm not trying to put all y'all in the same category, bro. Look, some be abusing their power. If that dog would have bit you and you would have shot that dog, it would have been the dog is defending the property that is on its territory. Over here now! Get over here right now! Tase him, bro. Taser deployed. Start me at 20. The officer quickly escalated the situation. Even though Nate had nothing to do with the incident, the officer tased him and also threatened to shoot Nate's dog. This is what the law would describe as excessive use of force. Nate's exactly. first instinct was to get inside his house out of fear of those who were supposed to protect him. He ended up coming out with his family and was arrested. Instead of simply handcuffing him, the officers threw him to the ground, even though he wasn't resisting. Then the police finally went to speak to the person who had actually called them. Uh, All right. Call you called, correct? Uh, yeah. Was this about him, correct? No, no, no. It was, the, uh, it was another guy, but he ran through the, he had the gun. He was standing by that telephone pole, and he was talking about shooting up me and her within that playing car. And he was talking about, you know, and uh, he was talking about shooting up in her. In her in because when I house. walked up, you said, yes, that's him. No, no, I did. Yes, no. you did, because I walked up and I said, who are you here about? And he said, yes, that's why I'm here. And so when I started confronting him about going in the house, that's oh, when all this erupted. I, I asked you, I said. I misunderstood what you said. Because when I walked up here, I said, is this him? He was like, no, I don't know, you're talking about open your ears, mm. blah, blah, blah. And I said, is this why I'm here? And you said, yes, that's why you're here. Yeah, because when you start going toward him to the steps, I was hollering, that's not him. But he was all, but he, see, he just ignorant. He, he always got, yeah, I know. you know, talking. And, uh, he said he was just ignorant. You know, just act a total fool. Yeah. Okay, this is where things get more interesting. The cop proceeded to basically admit to his superior that he arrested him because he was guessing it was him. This is a violation of constitutional rights since it has been established that good faith from the arresting officer is not enough to arrest someone. And to make things worse, they talked about making up charges despite knowing he was completely innocent. Because I, I pulled up here and he was standing out in the middle of the road and I was like, well, I'm guessing this guy could be it. What was the, I didn't even hear what the initial call was. Somebody said they had a gun, they were threatening to shoot this guy and so when I pulled up he walked out of the house and this guy was telling me to, like I said hey are you polo and he's like I don't know what you're talking about leave me alone like he's calling you shoot he's like going like this like shoot shoot and I was like well, I'm trying to figure out why I'm here and he's like he called you not me now go deal with him and I was like I said something to him um, I asked him like what is your name he made some comment I said what and he said how about you open up your ears and shut your mouth and I was like, how about I say, excuse me? And then so I asked him for his ID, and he was like, man, what you talking about, leave me alone, uh, disorderly and resisting? And if Panaz could help me with make up anything else. But that's what I have right now, is disorderly resisting. Nate's charges brought by the officer were dismissed, and he filed a lawsuit against the city seeking a total of $3 million in damages, which they settled for an undisclosed amount. The officer was suspended for 60 days for using force outside guidelines and submitting reports that contained false and misleading information. This is the face of an officer who realized that they accidentally euthanized $100,000 worth of snakes. In April oh, of I've seen this clip before, bro. 2023, wildlife they had officer babies or something. It was about a year birth and he accidentally killed the, uh, the snake. Or I ain't gonna say accident. Uh, I'll just say accidentally. Cause he didn't know clearly what his face was like. Oh shit! Like you knew he fucked up. Officers were called about undocumented python snakes that were in a list of non-native invasive reptiles. The owner of the facility requested the officers to take possession of and euthanize 34 of the illegal pythons, but they accidentally euthanized a boa who was pregnant. Okay. Just throw it in. I feel bad though. I mean, I feel that's a, it's a, it's a boa, but but it's a rare and it's made right now. It's like ten thousand dollars snakes, like the babies. They're really expensive bread. I'm just it's a mistake. There's uh the boa's dead. The what? The boa. We fucked. The pregnant boa. We messed up. 
No! Yeah. No! Oh my god, that guy's gonna flip out! What is wrong with you guys? Who yeah. did it? Hold on. We're eight. Hey, we're shaking just like you are. Trust me. Is there a way to maybe save the baby? Can we save it? Oh no, dude. This guy's gonna go bananas. Oh my god, why? There was a mistake. There was a mistake. How? I reminded you I... ten times! The people working at the facility were obviously extremely upset since there were signs that it was a boa snake, and he warned them many times to specifically not mess with that snake. It can get fixed. You, you can't the fix state's it. gonna fix it. You can't Relax. fix it. Well, it, it, just it, 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 it Relax. Can Back in 2022, tell, I lost bro, two wrong, very man. important people in my life. Big figures. It really wasn't until February. How you gonna tell him to calm down after y'all just kick? That is so weird. It's just like taking a somebody relative life or spouse life and you say, we made a mistake. I'm so sorry. How are you expecting to be calm in that situation, bro? You're not going to be calm. He has every right to lash out. Now, I'm not saying he got a right to harm anybody, but lash out and be mad. Cool. Let his frustration and anger, you know, out. as long as he ain't harming other people or damaging stuff. Cool. But let this man lash out. Can't fix it. You just killed something that wasn't illegal and it had about a hundred thousand dollars worth of babies. Hey, keep an eye on him. Make sure you keep an eye on him. Thank you. Even though it's unclear the outcome and compensation the owner of the reptile facility received, the officer did mention that the state is going to fix it. So let's hope that the man got compensated. Hopefully. A woman named Jessica and her boyfriend left her car parked when a random drunk man smashed her windshield. Once Jessica got back to her car, she flagged down an officer on a bike to tell him someone had broken her windshield. What Jessica didn't know is that the officer was investigating a hit and run that happened a block away. The cop, upon seeing the broken windshield, thought Jessica was the one that committed the hit and run, and the officer immediately started accusing her. Car was just involved in a hit and run collision where a pedestrian was hit. And don't make faces like you don't know no, what I'm talking, but listen I to me. Oh my listen God. listen okay. to me. Leaving the scene of an injury accident is a felony. This isn't my first day. I know that you're, you were driving and you were worried about it because you're drinking. If you can well, I came listen to get to my cigarettes. You can ask the hi-fi security guard. Like, then how did your car have damage on your windshield? I have no idea. Okay. If I have you, no listen idea. Listen to me. Because of the nature of the incident and the injuries, if you continue to say we don't know that you're driving and you don't know what happened to your car, we're going to do DNA tests and all sorts Absolutely, of other things to yes. the car. And it's going to show that you were... The couple was in the nightclub for hours, and despite having nothing to do with the hit and run, the officer simply refused to listen. I'm not going to listen to you because you're lying to me. The, the problem is, as, as you guys left, were involved in a collision, no, you panicked, no, we did you not. pulled over here. No, we did not. No, we did not. Okay. You cannot pin that. You're not, you're not pinning that on us because that is but not... The this truth. is... You're not listening to me. I'm listening to you. You're, you're not... You're saying that this vehicle listen, was involved... Listen, and stop it, it talking for a second. You're not listening to... Let me show you the transactions. Let me show you the transactions. I don't need to see the transactions. Why? Why? Because it validates, validates my truth. Exactly. Why you don't need to see it? You want to just pin that on them. I feel like that's a scot free. You know, look, you in the clear. If I can show you that I was not at that area at this time where that said uh, hit and run happened, I could walk away free. So why can't I prove my innocence? <laughs> bro, cops be tripping. But this, this video low key was like putting a. Because I react to a lot of body cam footage, and for the most part, the ones that I do see, the cops are handling stuff in a respectful manner. It'd be the, the people that, you know, take stuff overboard, for the most part. So, when I see videos like this, it's like, damn, bro. <laughs> it, are, it is officers out here that's like this. No, the, there's evidence that you can't dispute. That's not evidence about anything. There's a person that hit the windshield. Nobody hit the windshield. Okay. This car. All right. I'm not going to argue with you, man. It is, okay. and we have cameras. I'm trying to help protect you guys now because now you're lying to us. She has glass on her clothing like an explosion, like small shards of glass. Here's where the officer was caught in a lie. Jessica clearly had no glass on her. And if they had checked the cameras, they would know the broken windshield had nothing to do with the hit and run. The police then booked her, took her blood for future DNA tests, and also forced her to strip naked. Shockingly, the police had video evidence showing what happened before she was handcuffed or taken to the county jail. 
Jessica was wrongly charged with a DUI and failure to stop at the scene of an accident, despite not driving. Jessica retaliated with a massive lawsuit, which was eventually settled after three years. A false 911 phone call by hotel staff resulted in a $200 million lawsuit, and it's easy to see why. A 41-year-old resident of Dubai resulted in a 200 million settled after three years. A false 911 phone call by hotel staff resulted in a $200 million lawsuit, and it's easy to see why. A 41-year-old resident of Dubai named Ahmed was in the United States to undergo medical treatment at Cleveland Clinic, which is ranked the second best hospital in the world. Ahmed went to seek accommodation at the Fairfield Inn by Marriott Hotel, and was told it was fully booked due to a convention, but to wait in the lobby while they gather other options. And in a crazy turn of events, the sister of the front desk worker made this call. Hi, my sister works at the Fairfield Inn on Colorado Avenue in Avon. She is a desk worker. Okay. There is a male in a full headdress with multiple disposable phones pledging his, um, pledging his allegiance or something to ISIS. Okay. Is that is the most racist thing. Bro. Ignorance, and to make matters worse, the father made a similar call after the sister texted him. Uh, hello? Yes. My, my daughter is working at Fairfield Inn. And I was just, are you, is this his dad? Yes. She's en route. Uh, uh, thank you. She, all right. She said she's in the back. I, I have the text. Uh, she said she's terrified, so oh, Okay, all right. Uh, thank you. Obviously, the man never said any of the things he was accused of, and no one knows what prompted the sister to lie. The police arrived and he was arrested at gunpoint. And while they were searching his pockets and inspecting for possible weapons, another officer was talking to the actual hotel worker that attended him. So you said you guys were booked? Yeah, we said we were booked. Okay. Everywhere he called is booked too. It's summer people are Sure, me. absolutely. Um, so, I mean, that's what he had two phones. He was searching the internet on one phone, making calls on a disposable phone. Um, that's really all that I know. It just freaks me out because of everything. Like he didn't say anything else? No, it's just, it's... Uh, because the call we got is that someone said that he was pledging his allegiance to ISIS no, and... No, 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 no. He, Michael, this is going on. Who, who, who would have said that? Who, I, who made the call? I told my sister, I said, it's my sister, her name's Allison. She called, I said, he's dressed in a weird outfit, he has two disposable phones. How's that a weird outfit? Like, like, 23. Stop. stop with the BS, bro. How's that a weird outfit? What year does it? 30 units, stop your uh, search. Is this Man thing down. in here? Once the police realized the caller made a widely false accusation, he immediately called the search off. What the sister did was a crime under Ohio law for reporting a false emergency. To worsen matters, Amon managed to speak with a friend who was a police officer and offered to translate. When they informed him of the accusations, he collapsed. Having previously undergone heart surgery, he was hospitalized for several days. Fortunately, he fully recovered and filed a lawsuit against the officers and Marriott. The police department issued a formal apology in person, but no charges were brought against the woman who made the false call. And after three years of legal battles, the $200 million lawsuit was settled for an undisclosed amount. What at first seemed to be a regular traffic stop ended up with a college athlete suing the city for false arrest and then the city countersuing him for defamation. It all started on an August night, just around midnight, when a student Not was a driving with his blind lines on. Student Police Department. The reason I pulled you over is because you have your bright lights on. Yeah, I have a, I have a headlight out, so I just keep my brights on. Okay, well that's not legal. Oh, is it? No. Hey, look. Trust. I, bro, I, similar situation happened to me. I literally turned my brights on because I did have a headlight off. And I get it. It can blind people that's, you know, they come in the opposite way or whatever. So I had my brights on. The cop flashed me to turn on, because he was at a stop sign, so I'm going through the stop sign. He flashed me from the stop sign that he was at, telling me, uh, you know, flash me, like, turn him off or whatever. And I didn't turn him off, because I was like, bro, I'm going to get pulled over the way I go. So I didn't turn him off. So I, I continued driving. Then he turn his lights on, get behind me. So like, hey, you got your brights on. Uh, you blind the hell out of me, man. Like, you can blind somebody else and cause an accident. And I said the same thing. I was like, oh, I got it on because my headlight. He's like, nope, that's not how that works. Da -da -da. So similar ex incident for me, bro. That brought back yeah, memories. Yeah, when, right when a car comes by, I turn them off. But like, when you didn't with me. Oh, you weren't close enough though. You were like, you were, close you're close enough. Yeah, you were a while back. It has to be within 500 feet. Oh, my bad. I'm sorry. And you're not that. supposed to have your brights on in the city limits. My fault, my fault. You got your license, registration, insurance yeah, with you? Yeah, I got you. Where are you coming from? Friends 
house. Okay. Anything to drink over there? Nope. I didn't hear what you said. There's one of these. Need one of these right here. The student ended up providing all the information the officer requested. Then the officer asked him if he could go to the car for further questioning. This is where things started to go downhill. How much have you had to drink tonight? None. What do you mean none? I had nothing to drink. Okay. Why would you? Uh, why would your eyes be watery and bloodshot? Do you want to blow me real quick? No, I don't want to blow you. Pause. Yo, know, the cop just said pause, bro. He said, I don't want to blow you. Pause. Hey, bro, that was crazy work, bro. <laughs> Not the cop, bro. Not the cop saying that. That's so crazy, bro. I should be watery and bloodshot. You want to blow me real quick? I don't want to blow you. Pause. <laughs> we'll probably get there. Um. Despite the officer making a wildly inappropriate joke, it's important to note that yeah. one, the student asked for a breathalyzer, which would have shown if he was sober or not. And two, on the footage, one can see his eyes were not bloodshot. I've had nothing to drink. Okay. So your movements in the car with you fumbling over the registration? Yep. Um, kind of say otherwise. All right. And so does the odor of alcohol coming from your person. Great. Let's, let's do a test and we'll, we'll get to the test. I can't wait. So what happens if, you know, nothing pops up? Do you get in trouble? No. Why would I get in trouble? Because you think I'm drinking, but I'm not drinking. I'm not gonna get in trouble for doing what I'm supposed to do. Can I record it? Yeah, absolutely. What's your name? My name's Officer Winters. So Officer Winters thinks I'm drinking tonight. We're about to do a test and he's gonna find out I had nothing to drink. He's gonna look stupid. <laughs> Ain't that right? I've had nothing to drink, zero. All right, so let's go up on the sidewalk here, and I'll talk with you up there. I okay? thought would do me like that, bro. Which, at the end of the day, they don't know, but shit. I don't even drink alcohol, bro. Don't smoke nothing. Like, I wish you would try me like that. Because I'm, I'm definitely, go ahead, bro. Breathalyze me, bro. Search the car. Whatever you need to do, go ahead, bro. I'm going to give you permission and everything to do that, bro. And then, yup, boom. Going to prove your dumb ass wrong. Can't, you can't accuse me of no shit like that. Cause it ain't gonna work, bro. Not saying I got a firearm, yeah, but guess what? It's illegal for me to have one, bro. Uh, you'll find that for sure. But you could try to turn up on that too. But guess what? It's legal, bro. Cool. Eager to take the field sobriety test, both got out of the vehicle and proceeded with it. The student spoke clearly and articulated well during the first test, passing it with no problem. However, there was some confusion with the instructions for the walk and turn test. Three, just like I did. You're gonna walk after nine steps. You're gonna turn, take a series of small steps and take nine steps back, okay? During this, keep your arms down to your side. Watch your steps. Count your steps out loud, and once you've started walking, do not stop until you've completed the test, okay? Perfect. So you wanna get to nine. I guess, so, how do I turn? Uh, take a series of small steps. Stops walking, 13 steps. Come on, man, it's too easy. Mm -hmm. Let's do the breath now. You're two for two. Well, sir, I don't believe you are two for two. How many steps did I say to take? Like eight or nine? I said nine. Why'd you take 14 and then 15? I thought you were going to tell me when to turn. I said to count your steps out loud. Yo, dumbass. Um, so paid, the next bro. test is I what, what did that prove? What did that prove? That he misunder misunderstood you? You being petty as hell, bro. I told you to say nine steps. You turn, why you take 14, 15? Like, what, bro? Come on. Yo ass just bored, bro. <laughs> Just Yo, stand with your heels and toes together. On the next test, the student starts getting frustrated and threw some digs at the officer, which is understandable, but maybe not the best idea. You a rookie, bro. Toes together no, with no. your arms down to your side. This is this your first year? No. No way. No. No way. <clears throat> when I say begin, I want how many, you. How many false accusations you got? Zero. It's about to be your first. Mm. Her? We'll ah, got him. Knock, knock. Hi there. I'd love to show you what a K-12 powered school is really. See? Um, what I want you, you know, to do. He knows it too. He knows about the passage. Right, during this, keep your arms down to your side. Why are you shaking so much? It's freezing, man. Look at you. You got all these clothes on and I got shorts on and it's raining. And you false accusing me, so of course I'm going to be a little nervous.
After some other field sobriety tests in which the student passed, the officer finally brings out the breathalyzer to end this whole situation. You ready? Yep. Okay, you can relax. Um, so I'm gonna read you Miranda, okay? When's the, right now you have the right to remain silent, anything you the officer immediately started reading the student's Miranda rights, despite him blowing a 0.00, .00 indicating no alcohol in his system. This was contradictory to the officer's earlier claim of smelling alcohol. Unable to book the student for alcohol, the officer decided to switch the alleged substance to marijuana. When's the last time you smoked weed? I do not remember that. Tonight? Oh. Okay, well I, was, no I, tonight, I think right? it's tonight. I've had no weed tonight. What? Why do you think it's tonight? Why do you think I smoke? I blew zero, so now you're trying to think I smoke weed. That's what's going on. You can't do that, man. You yes, really can't do Absolutely that. Absolutely, I can. Is he allowed to do that? Yes, he is. So I blow zero, and so you smoke drugs, man. At the station, the officer took down information and kept inquiring about the student's substance use, which the student denied, stating he hadn't used marijuana in the past year. Then another officer came in and administered another field sobriety test, which the student passed without issue. After medical tests, the second officer concluded there were no signs of impairment and told him he was free to go home. The student then asked to speak to the officer who had detained him. Yeah, he's around here. Can I talk to him? If you want, um, I was just gonna take you home. Okay, yes, I just wanna speak to him. I'm really disappointed in how he can't bite your job. I test. based my decision on your field sobriety tests. Next time, I would recommend asking for clarification. If you don't understand something, ask. The student, whose name is Taven, sued the city of Newton, and the city countersued for defamation. So Taven Galanakis is suing the city of Newton, the chief of police, and two other Newton officers. The city of Newton and three of its police officers are now countersuing a college student for defamation. Even though the case is still ongoing, so we don't know how much money Taven will get, an eerily similar story was shared on a street interview hosted by Chris Stocks that had a $1.4 million settlement. How much money are in your bank accounts? Well, I got like probably four or five grand in the bank account, but then I did get a trust fund set up, which is pretty nice. Can you tell me how much is in the trust fund? I'm like 1.2, 1.3 million. When I was around 17. I, I was a good at two shoes in high school. Like I always followed by the rule books, never drank or anything, but uh, I got pulled over one time. I was driving some of my drunk friends home. The cop pulled me over. He's like, so have you boys been drinking tonight? I was like, no officer, I haven't. We're just driving home. He saw the guys. He's like, had me do a sober test for his. He had me walk in a line. I have a horrible balance. Couldn't walk 10 steps in a line. And so he's like, yeah, it looks like you're f***ed up. I'm not taking you to the station. I was like, dude, just breathalyze me. Come on, like, let me show you something. And either way, he didn't f***ing listen. He booked me just without any reason. So then afterwards, when they found out I had, like, they breathalyzed me there and I had a 0, 0.0, but the cops went along with it. So afterwards, we got to take it to the court, actually, which was f***ing lit. Two police officers pulled over a 25-year-old woman from Georgia for allegedly speeding. And while they were being somewhat harsh, no one could have expected what was about to happen next. Right. Stay in the car. Sorry, my window doesn't hold. Off the Brown Roswell Police Department. You know how fast you were just going, ma'am? I'm so sorry. I'm late for work. You have your driver's license and your insurance card? Yeah, my insurance. Turn off the car and pass me the keys, please. Yeah, you were speeding and speeding. Now she told you to turn the car off and pass the keys. Second, I'll be right with you. In a crazy turn of events, the officers went to their car and opened a coin toss app to decide the fate of the driver while they were giggling about it. What's that? A head, R tail. Okay. <laughs> this is tail, right? Yeah, so really. 23. <laughs> Michael Jordan? <laughs> Hi. So I got too, too fast for, let me write this down. Too fast for conditions. While it's hard to say if what they did is illegal, one can tell it was not the first time they've done it, and a clear right. violation of due process and ethical standards. The officers were temporarily suspended for their actions. Even though sometimes people do strange things during regular traffic stops, which lead to the police to start an investigation, this woman was just going throughout her day, about to get on a plane at LAX when she was stopped by an officer and immediately arrested. Apparently someone with her name had a warrant for her arrest in Texas. She ended up spending 13 days in jail until they eventually check her ID, which showed a completely different birth date, and she did not look anything like the other suspect. Immediately all I could think was I've never been to Texas. I kept saying that you that they had the wrong person and to double check, and they just said, yep, yeah, nope, we have it, Bethany, Kaylee Farber. They just be going where they, they be going where they move. If they feel like you guilty, they gonna, cause it's supposed to be innocent to proven guilty, but 
They ask me to treat them like you damn. That you guilty. Anyway, man, that's the internet. Y'all, yeah, let me know what y'all think about it in the comment section below. Make sure y'all win a like, sub, sub, do turn post notifications. And you can follow me on IG and Twitter. Links in the description. Hit me up over here, man. We're going crazy over that 200k. Let's keep running it up, man. It's your boy, they be wallin'. And I'm out.